You are watching part two of the Testers 148th SR71 Blackbird. If you haven't seen it, go back and watch part one. You don't want to miss that. A lot of good stuff in that video, which is basically the cockpit. Uh, here, as you can see, we've already broken off. These are the inner wheel wells. We've broken this off from the sprues, and we're just lightly going around the edges. That way, we can scrape all this paint off. That way, we can glue, because of course, you know, the glue does not like to stick to paint. So we are breaking off the rear fuselage area. We are going to glue these portions to this wheel well, as you see here. So just go around the edges with your glue. And here you can see this is the wheel well, part number 17 right there. It fits perfectly right there. Go around the other wheel well on the other side. Same procedure that we just did. Use your glue, don't use a lot of it, just enough. Make sure you have all your paint scraped away and place this part down as well. There you go, this is what it looks like. We are going to remove the upper part of the fuselage as well. So here we have that. You got these little holes that fit into slots. What we are going to do is we're going to lightly press those down into there. Uh, we're putting some glue on the sides here because that's also where the wheel wells will line up with. Go around the edges, make sure you know where you're putting all your glue. Don't make a mess of it because otherwise you're going to have to sand it down and that can be a little bit tedious and a bit of a pain for something that we don't have to do. So here I am going around all the edges. We're making this look nice and pretty the best we can. I'm getting towards the end of my glue here so sometimes it takes me a little bit of time to get it out. Uh, parts are a little loose. Make sure you have some clamps that we can clamp this down by the time we get to set this piece that way nothing pops out you can use tape or whatever you want so finishing up the edges right here a little bit more left and we will take this piece and we will put it on so you see it fitting in place snaps right on in there you can see these are where the wing nacelles will go on the inside where those holes are left right there those slots i've got clamps going around this that way it holds everything together while I'm letting it dry, I'm going to put on the other portion of the fuselage. It's just going to rest right on top of this. And you'll see me do this quite soon. As you can see, it has those same little holes on there that you can fill in the holes. And then those press into the top. Make sure you get each side good with the glue. Make sure you get all the parts that you want. Test fit, made it up, see where your glue needs to go ahead of time. Uh, this is the portion you see those real wells there too are also painted that uh, titanium silver previously I don't know if I actually showed that in the latest video But here you see me pressing this down. You can see where the fuselage meets up with the other parts This is the tail end. So two pieces there You want to make sure this goes together as well scrape off all your flashing that you have Put your glue on as you see me doing make sure you put it in the right spots Go around the tail with it. Make sure all those little pieces that you see, the flashing is cleared away from the middle and that doesn't hinder anything. Press down, let it sit nice and firm. And then you can do the opposite side. Squeeze your glue out. Again, don't get too much on there. Go around the right side and the left. I'm also putting it on that actual tail piece too. If you were doing uh, different versions of the SR-71, you'd have to modify this, like for the one that was uh, used by the CIA and NASA. So just go around the edges and carefully place this. Do whatever you can to hold that in place. That way it stays together. I'm putting a little bit of glue in the tip there. That way I can make sure that is secure too. So we are cutting this out. This is going to go in the engines. These are the inlet spikes on the nacelles. These are the out ports for the engines as well. So cut all these off. All this stuff you see here is all for the engines and these all go with the nacelles that will go on, which are the wings. Paint the insides of those a light gray color. Have you ever seen an SR-71 on the inside? This is what they look like. They just, all that fuel and that burst of heat, it just, it grays them. So just get all the insides of those. There's a couple ways to do this. You could put the whole assemblies together and slowly go along the insides. Here we're going to paint the tips of these that same color. Just slowly work it in and out. Get all the way around on the inside of this engine. Put the top piece on top there like you see me doing. I test fitted it first. Just using a toothpick to put a little bit of glue on so I don't make a mess. I know they have tools that you can use to do that. I don't have one. Put that piece on and then here you can see the top portion. Make sure that fits. We're going to fit that on and then we'll just let these parts dry. And that's simple. You do one and then you do the other piece. 
So here's a different way of doing it. You can put glue on that portion, then put it on the back portion, and then you can put the inside of the engine onto that that you would see if you were looking inside of those actual engine exhaust ports. And that's what it looks like. So here is one of the nacelles. You're going to cut off the left portion and then the top and the bottom. And then you'll do the right side, top and bottom as well. And we will glue those together. Here we are cutting these off, each one of them. Take your time, do it right. Cut any flashing off that you see. Just put your glue on that inside leading edge. Go all the way around, as I said. Be careful where you put the glue and we're like on these little tabs here you don't want to put them on everything so just test fit first and you want to see where the glue goes here i've got my uh, little clamps down and as you can see finally got some new glue and i've got a little tip on there too to make things easier because i had a comment a long time ago of too much glue so this will ensure not too much glue so we're just going around this is going to be the other nacelle that goes on to the other wing this is the bottom half fitting onto the top half, pressing it firmly, making sure everything fits nice and easy. These are your inlet spikes, and these are the things that you see that protrude from the nacelles on the SR-71. Put your glue all the way around here. Carefully, make sure you don't make too big of a mess. And you put those onto the other part of the inlets. Here are the rudders. They come in two pieces, the big portion and then the small portion. Why they did it like that, I don't know. Maybe they just so it could give you a piece to glue to something, perhaps, because I don't really see a point in why they didn't make this all one piece. But anyway, that's how they did it. So just slightly put your glue on here. As you can see, the glue went back to being a smaller piece of glue with, uh, now I've got the tip on there. So clearly a little bit of editing going on there, huh? Anyway. So you put small bead of glue along the edge here, put it on the uh, little inlet there that you see, that little tab, and then put the tab into the slot. Once you do that, that will complete that. And you will also grab the exhaust ports, run your glue along the inside of that, and then just carefully put this piece in. It was hard to get in. You had to kind of pop it in just right and then align it. It's got some slots and that's what it looks like. Uh, there are some decals that go here, one on the left, one on the right. I've only seen in person what it looks like on a Skunk Works, which is in the Smithsonian. And it's got an L on the left side and an R on the right, and they are both red. It doesn't have two on each side like I did, but this is all I know. I couldn't find many pictures of that. Here is me going around the inside where the exhaust port is supposed to go. And we're just going to put that into place, pop it in. And then you just align it properly. Here is the inlet spike as I was talking about earlier. Put that on the inside and make sure it lines up properly. We're going to glue this. I already glued the other nacelle on the left, the right side. And we're going to glue this nacelle onto the left side. So the right side is already done as you can see. Get our glue. Make sure it's on all the tabs that need to go on. And we're going to put it into the slots right here. Carefully press down and just let these dry for a little bit. Make sure they don't shift when you're letting them dry. So this is the canopy, the top portion of it. That's on the rear. This is the front. Let's see how they meet up. We're going to put these in place. Do a little bit of filing from any flashing that you have because I had to do that. So just carefully go along the edges. Not too bad here. I'm going to be making mine to where they stand up. So you can do yours if they're down either or this is what it looks like with them just sitting in place time to do a little bit of putty i'm a little messy here but that's okay so just work your putty along these seams there are a bunch of seams that we have to do on this model uh some of them i put some masking on to make it easier some i use my bare finger some i use some gloves so we're just going to carefully do this the best we can you want to sand it I'm not one to do a lot of time sanding and doing putty because these models are just for my use and just because I like doing models. So here you can see all this yellow tape that I've got going around this entire model. It's a lot. I had to use a lot of filler. There are a lot of places that have filler because there were a lot of gaps. Some were big, some were small. You can see that's all the way up the entire nose right there. This is the back side that I've masked off. I had to do this in two areas just by the way these lines were on the back side. So here, I used a glove, slightly spreading this on. 
This method, I just took the green putty and I put it on through the tube itself and then smeared it out. I'm not good at sanding. I'm working on that. It takes practice, as you know. So here I am just lightly sanding these areas. That way I can get them to look almost perfect. Here I am peeling the tape away. As I said, I didn't do the most perfect of jobs with filling these gaps in. You can do it how you want. It's your model. I did it how I wanted. So taking all the tape away, it definitely looks a lot cleaner. I can say that. Peeling this nacelle off. This is from the front side on the top. Keep going. Almost done. So here's a little bit of remasking that I had to do for certain areas. This is what it looked like after I did my sanding. I painted the model black after this, but before I did do that, I masked off some stuff, such as the landing gear and these spy windows. Be careful not to press the spy window in, because otherwise you're going to have trouble getting it out. So I used two pieces of tape for each one. I just put the tape over, lightly cut the pieces, and then I put another piece over. I did the best I could. Spy windows aren't easy. Not an easy way to do this model. Maybe if you use some like liquid film, that might be a better way to do it, but I don't have that either. Here we go, masking off the landing rear wells. Maybe I could have just put the uh, doors in place and just held them there somehow, uh, but this is how I did it. So you can do it how you want. Get all the yellow tape in there. These are the rear wheel wells. Get that tape pressed down, do the other side. Mask off the front and the inside of the canopy because the top goes black and the inside of it will go a dark gall gray. So just carefully go around the edge as you see I'm doing here. Good thing for clear masking tape. It makes it a lot easier. And just peel away that masking just like that. And it should stay on if your blade's fairly sharp. So that's one side of this. And then we will do the other side as you see here and then we do the inside so just put some tape along the inside of the window and just lightly use your cutting tool go on each side top bottom left and right and just slowly peel the tape away and you will have these completely masked off remember there are three canopies the front glass and then the front windshields and the back canopy so here is the front that I'm doing same thing with this also go along the inside edges of this too so here's that's what I'm doing this is actually the inside it's hard to tell by the way I'm holding it but it's got that little spike so there we go I've got that peeled away actually I, that was the top portion now we'll do the inside so get our tape do the same thing put it on you see me peeling it off here and now it's done front and back this is the rear canopy going to do the same thing take the glass off right here going around the edges get all of that they're a little rounded so it's a little bit different and there we have it going around the inside edge of this one get the tape off as well and that's the canopies so these are the doors clearing the flashing away it's the rear landing gears and what you see there is a gap right here Run your blade along the edge several times. This is where the gear separates to make both halves in case you want to do this model with your landing gear down. Here's the flashing I was talking about. Make sure you clear that off. I didn't clear it off earlier because I did mine on the sprues. So this is the front landing gear doors. You got that small little piece and then the two that go on the sides. Time to start painting parts. This is I decided to make the canopies I primered them to make it easier for the paint to stick and make it look better. So I just put on a gray primer on both the front and the back and the inside. And it looked really well when it was done. So we are now painting the model. Just going over the black with some black because it's a black model and I figured it looked better black. I think I started off with some gloss black, then went to flat, then went back to gloss. Remember, you need it gloss anyway, so when you put the decals on, they don't silver. I say that all the time, but you know, sometimes we forget about it. And reminders are good. Make sure your pieces stay down, because otherwise they pop up. So here we go. This is the main model. Just light coats. You see me going over this, slowly hiding all those imperfections that I had. And if you paint it with primer first, you can see all those imperfections. I wasn't concerned. 
I just did the whole model in black right away just slowly going over it this was a large model as you could see it's fairly long it's an SR-71 Blackbird this 148th scale is larger than any other 148th scale model so enjoy it I did while I was doing it I can also say the 172nd version of the SR-71 is larger than 148th scale models so just to put you into perspective of how big this plane is so we're going along the nacelles over here getting all of that covered along the wing don't forget to get the tail because that's important too because of course there is tails to it so those are what make the plane turn left and right we're getting the tail here just go up and down that tail you want to make sure you get the middle so in order to do this I wouldn't do the whole middle I would do one right side then I would turn the plane over to the other side just keep painting this model going back and forth you'll get it done eventually I used a lot of paint on this I want it covered very well here we are we're doing that right side of the model and after we're done with the right side as I said we flip it to the other side that way we can get all the cracks and crannies on the opposite side you're also going to want to spray paint in different directions because it's got a lot of grooves in there by the way when you're doing the decals for this they'll turn out really well with those grooves if you use some microsol that's what I did so here we are we're doing the other side like I said we turned it over just going across this model on this nacelle this is the right one going on the opposite side so you can see where I could get those grooves and you can actually see this gloss so I clearly used a gloss paint the first time around doing this keep going along the length of this model and we'll do this fuselage right here you can see me going across the whole length of it hiding all those green areas that we did some sanding and some bondo and whatever else we had to do here I am going in different directions I'm covering the uh, rear engines that way I don't get any overspray into them because we don't want that you can put some little black streaks in there if you want to here we are just putting another coat on I wanted to make sure this model was thoroughly covered uh, we're doing some tails right here just keep going this is the rear underside of the plane and you can see all those areas that I had done with the uh, green putty the fill in I didn't have to do a lot of sanding on those just a little bit because um, I didn't really mind how it looked I was happy with it so just keep going back up and forth I did mask off the inside of those inlet spikes with some toilet paper I just shoved it in there that way I wouldn't get any overspray in there uh, because of those silver parts and it also had the decals here I am just going over the front of the fuselage back and forth back and forth over and over again until this model looked how I wanted it to look so we're going to cover all these green areas right here I can say the model I was happy with how it turned out uh, when you do the wheels eventually you want to make sure those look right too so here we go we're almost done with the painting of this at least with the uh, gloss coat on this model so just keep going back and forth doing one more coat on the front um, I did also mask off the cockpit area these are the wheels the wheel doors I should say spraying those finally we're doing some wheels break each wheel off there's a lot of those the rear wheels have three wheels per side and the front have two wheels on them one on each side uh, they only go certain ways the wheel in the middle of course is going to have holes that go completely through it so you need to pay attention to what you're doing when you do these and they actually go a rust if you've ever seen an SR-71 Blackbird the hubs go rust on the rear wheels and the um, wheels themselves are made out of like an aluminum type of rubber mix so just put your glue on the inside put the wheels together here I held it down put another wheel on you see that's the hub right there take the landing gear off of the sprues this concludes part two watch part one part three is coming in two weeks subscribe for that update comments and likes are appreciated see ya